into royalty. The Lord God allowed her to have a camouflage effect in the presence of the enemy. And he talked to Esther. Come on, somebody. Amen. And Esther knew where she was and she knew how important it was for her to continue to have this camouflage effect. So she began to go through the process of qualifying to be a king. Queen, see, when you already know you're a queen, you already gonna get the position because you are so is a man thinking, so is he. So she went in as queen. She went in as Queen Esther before she was even crowned because she was already crowned by the Lord thy God. So then when she goes in, this is Esther. Esther, you got to do the wardrobe changes and you got three, four hundred other women up against you. But the women don't have the revelation that you have. The revelation is I'm already Queen Esther. How do you know who you are? How? Because God told you. So why is it that you continue to let the devil convince you otherwise? God told you to preach the gospel. You've been doing your church eight years. Everybody else seemed like they blossoming. You trying to do everything that God tell you to do. The devil telling you to quit. The devil trying to destroy your marriage. Everybody else see the glitter and the glow, the, the gold on the outside. But do they see the purging on the inside? Do they see what's going on? Do they see you go through the process? But when you know who you are, no matter what the process is, you just go through. You continue to run because you know that Jesus is on the other side of through. And you got to break through in order to get to the the other side. So Esther pressed. And to make a long story short, the king made a decree to kill her people. And Esther said, I gotta go. But at that time, if the king put the scepter out, you would be beheaded or destroyed. But Esther said, I got all of heaven back in me. So now, you're in the enemy's territory. You got all of heaven back in you. Whose trust are you going to put your life in? She could have been beheaded. But she knew who was backing her. You got visions and dreams and ambitions. I know when I was a drug dealer, I was one of the number one tithers in my church, and I'm proud of it. Amen. You understand me? Nobody in my church lights got cut off. Amen. When I was a drug dealer, my favorite scripture was the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. How is that? And you act you wicked and killing your people with drugs. But guess what? God knew my heart. Yes, yes. I stopped. I was. I'm gonna tell you how the devil is. I was serving my auntie because I felt like she was gonna get it from somebody else, right? Mm, yeah. So then I'm still a. I'm still a drug dealer, right? Mm. And then the Holy Spirit said, "Stop serving your auntie." Oh, I ain't even got there. I'm sorry. It's a drop. We, we, we don't care about a man of God preaching ahead because we understand that out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. I'm here to tell you, some of you guys are in an Esther situation. Yes. You're in a situation and you're being processed. But I'm asking you to transform your minds and think like a king and think like a queen. Yes. Embrace your promotion. See, what happens is Esther saw herself being queen. She was able to receive queen. She saw herself going to the king and being able to allow the king to pardon her people. Yes, yes. She called her people to go on a fast. And when she went before the king, she obtained the victory. The devil keeps you defeated because you allow him to. The devil keeps you defeated because your mindset already says defeated. You sitting around here looking at $1,300 Gucci bags. God wants you to have them. He don't want them to have you. He wants you to have them. God never said it's nothing wrong. And that's why people, people always talk about, well, you ain't never shook your pastor's hand. I mean, I have shook 
shake his hand, but I mean, he's not God present. Right. See, I go to World Changers Church because I know what Pastor Dollar did. Come on, somebody. I'm going to go yeah. level right here. But I know what that ministry did for me and my family. When we came off the streets yeah. and the Holy Spirit told me, go to that church. That's your church. Amen. And I had just got newly saved and my husband was still smoking weed. Amen. Still drinking, still clubbing. <laughs> But he said, you go to that church. And in my flesh, I said, can, can you, you do know, Lord, we just stopped. So no, we ain't got no W-2. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. All right. All right. So I ignored God. Uh -huh. And at this time, I had not been delivered. I'm going to close after this. I had not been. I'm going to read scripture, then I'm going to close. Okay. So I had not been delivered from laziness. Mm. I slept all day. But at 7.30, I watched the dog. At 9.30, when he came on a different channel, I watched the same episode for six months. Then I started dreaming about Pastor Dahl. He said, you know, I'm going to change some things in your life. I said, God, I'm, it's creepy. It's getting real ugly now. I said, dear, Pastor Dahl just came in your closet and started throwing away all your jerseys and stuff. He looking at me like, girl, I'm already high. You come to me talking about what God is saying. And he trying to figure out what's wrong with the house. Because at that time, I was hearing from God so clearly that it was so scary that it started scaring the people around me, like my friends, like, okay, now I'm saved, I got uh, saved, and now she's prophesying to us, and this stuff coming to pass, we need to keep her away, because we still doing bad stuff in our life, and we don't want her to call us out. But it wasn't, it wasn't God calling you out, it was God, God re revealing that he know what you're doing, and he yeah. know that he just trying to bring you out, because he know your potential, and he know that the feds want you, but he wants you more. Come on, somebody. He was sending us in. So I had to be in his presence like never before. And now I'm becoming this weirdo to Derek. Like, I'm like, every day I got a different word for him. And he's saying, man, I'm going to go, hey, why are you prophesying to me? Prophesying, not judging. Come on, somebody. Right. Prophesying, not judging. Right. I don't have time to keep looking at what you're doing. I'm doing what thus said the Lord. Sometimes in messed up situations, in messed up relationships, Anything worth having is worth fighting for. Yes, right. You're not fighting. Don't fight them. Fight the spirit that's trying to overtake them. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places and principalities. Yes. How do you tear down the devil? You cannot just walk up to the devil and punch him in the face. You have to break him down spiritually. Yes. The joy of the Lord is your strength. In the midst of chaos, how in the world can you lift up your hands?